Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Galatz, uh, and I am a program facilitator with the uh, Regina District Industry Education Council, and I work in the SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce, to introduce Kendra Weiss from Rosetown. Kendra is a registered nurse working at the Rosetown Health Center. Today, she'll tell us all about her occupation as a general duty nurse in a rural Saskatchewan hospital. Uh, just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in the future. We'd also like to request that any students who are watching this today go to, the, go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found on the webpage. Completion of the survey, get your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. So again, that's the website is www.rdiec.ca. So once again, Kendra, thanks for doing this session today, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. All right, I'll just start with the agenda first, and then I'll get into uh, who I am and kind of what I do for work. Um, so I'll start with introducing myself. We'll go through kind of my job description, um, some skills and traits that go along with that, um, the workplace setting that I work in, rewards and challenges that come with being a nurse, um, salary and benefits, educational requirements, um, and then I'll talk about my journey and how I got to be a registered nurse, and then talk a bit about uh, work-life balance, and then at the end I'll uh, open it up to questions if anyone has. So my name's Kendra. Uh, like Mr. Glott said, I'm a registered nurse. I've been nursing now for just over five years. Um, I work as a general duty nurse in a rural uh, facility in a small town, Rose Town. And then I also am still working casual um, in an urban center um, in Saskatoon as an ER nurse. Um, so with that, I work for the Saskatchewan Health Authority now that it's all one. Um, and it works quite well because I can work half time in one place and half time in the other. Um, so I'll just go through my job description. Um, so nurses provide um, essential care to individuals throughout the healthcare system. They're a big, uh, play a big role in that multidisciplinary team, disciplinary team with um, doctors, physio, respiratory therapists, all the different specialties, um, care aides, LPNs, everybody that kind of makes up that team. Um, and I kind of looked at what is my key role, I'd say, assessing, observing, and monitoring patients, as well as a large part of my job is documenting kind of everything we do throughout the day and um, with our patients. I administer medications and do different treatments, such as um, dressing, stuff like that, um, that the physician is uh, prescribing or wanting done. I operate and monitor medical equipment daily, um, such as taking blood pressures, watching cardiac monitors, stuff like that. Um, providing education to patients and families. I think that's one that even before I started nursing wasn't something that I was well aware of, but um, I definitely provide education on a daily basis to many people, um, as well as advocating for our patients and their families um, when they're not able to do so for themselves. Some traits, skills, and uh, personality um, characteristics uh, that kind of, I thought, work well as being a nurse and I see in myself, um, caring being number one, um, compassion. Uh, definitely um, need a lot of that when looking after patients throughout the day. Um, empathetic, uh, flexibility, um, I think that's huge. You kind of don't know how your day is gonna start out when you start or how it's gonna end. So I think being able to be flexible and kind of just go with the flow um, and see where your day takes you is definitely an asset that um, helps as a nurse. Um, detail oriented, um, lots of the skills are very, um, I guess, yeah, they require some practice and um, being very specific in the way you do it. So. Being detail oriented is important. Honesty, um, communication skills are huge. You're dealing with um, various people, um, different professions uh, all throughout your day, including patients, families, um, different doctors, and such. So I think communication skills are um, huge. 
um, as well as having those therapeutic communication skills to be able to um, really relate and have uh, good conversations with your patients and their families. Um, organization skills, um, roughly on a day-to-day, -day, I look after like five, six, seven patients all at once. So kind of being able to organize your tasks and what you need to get done in a day is really important. Um, and then problem solving skills as well. Um, there's lots of things that come up throughout your day that you kind of aren't expecting. So being able to work through that um, with your like coworkers and your team members to kind of create uh, resolutions to that is also really important. Um, I just have a little slide here on some equipment we use. I kind of tried to incorporate some pictures. None of these are actual patients. They're kind of, they're just my coworkers and myself, um, just related to confidentiality of patients. But the first picture there um, is a crash card and a cardiac monitor that we use daily in our emergency department um, for those six sick patients. Uh, the next picture there is us all in our um, PPE, which has been more evident in the last um, little while through the pandemic. Um, that's something that we would wear in an isolation room um, if someone's having um, like respiratory illnesses. Uh, then there's a vital sign machine there um, that we would use to take your blood pressure, your heart rate, check your oxygen saturations. Um, the next one there is a stethoscope. Um, I'm sure many of you know that was what that is, but just to listen to the heart, lungs, and tummy with that. And then I included another um, monitor that we use um, just for continual uh, monitoring on patients and some dressings, which is also another day-to-day -day thing that we kind of do all the time. Next, I'll get into um, rewards of nursing. So I think the first one that kind of came to my head was flexibility and a variety. Um, nursing can literally be, a, you can do so many things with a degree in nursing, um, as well as not just do one of the same things. Kind of like why I keep, keep up with doing two different uh, workplaces just so I have that flexibility and don't seem like I'm getting burnt out. I work in one facility and then I can go work a couple days in another facility with a new with new people, new um, opportunities and it's just a nice variety uh, with that. Um, sense of team and community, you're never really alone. You always have your other nurses, your doctors, physios, respiratory therapy, all those different people. Um, to help you and discuss different, um, you know, questions or concerns and stuff. It's never just you on your own. Um, making an impact and difference daily in people's life. I think this is huge and why um, I continue to go to work every day. It really, um, you know, you are making an impact and hopefully making a difference when someone's not feeling well or they're sick or their family members are sick. Um, truly is a big reward when you leave at the end of the day. Uh, another one I would say is big right now is job security. Um, there is lots of jobs in nursing and the need for nurses and people caring for um, sick people is not going anywhere. So I do think um, it is a huge thing in job security is you're always going to have a job. Um, continual learning and uh, frequent education opportunities. Um, yeah, getting into nursing, I didn't really realize, but it definitely is a lifelong learning um, career. I'm continually taking new courses, learning, learning, learning new things on the job every day. Um, and there's always like new education courses to join into or seek out all over the province or into other provinces as well. So I think that is a, another big uh, reward. And you're not just kind of stuck with what you know is what you know, you're kind of always learning. Um, opportunity for career advancement. Um, like I said, there's endless opportunities. Um, you can go back to school, take your master's, do your NP, you can always, um, work in an office job, there's public health, all these different um, areas to try out once you have experience. So I think that's also something that um, is appealing to the nursing career. Um, and then flexibility and schedule and hours. I 
definitely included this because I know nursing hours aren't always the best, but I do have the opportunity to um, trade my shifts with my other coworkers if I have something on on the weekend that I uh, want to be at, don't want to miss. Um, Right now, I only own a half-time position, so I have the opportunity to pick up my other my other hours whenever I want. So I usually choose to do that during the week, um, so that I have the weekends at home. Uh, so I don't know. Um, not every job is that way, and where you kind of pick and choose what days of the week you want to work. And I think that's a big advantage. And then the not so good stuff: some challenges of nursing. Um, Definitely the physical labor. Um, as a like a floor nurse, it's definitely not the easiest um, on your body. You're working 12, 12 hour day shift, night shift, evening shift. So it definitely it makes for long hours um, and important that you're resting on those days off and um, self care, I guess. Um, and then shift work with the night shift work, I definitely think um, that can be a challenge for some, um, myself definitely, but others like thrive working night shifts and it just makes it easier for their life. So I guess it can also be an asset. Um, it can be demanding at times, um, high stress um, environment um, in those emergency situations. But I think knowing how to debrief and um, having those support systems uh, can definitely uh, make that easier for you. Another big challenge um, of nursing right now is a staffing shortage. Um, there's been a lot of um, older nurses retiring, so we're having uh, lots of vacant um, lines, vacant shifts, and having a hard time um, recruiting because it takes four years to get through school. So if anyone wants to come work with me, that would be great. Um, emotional involvement uh, with that. Um, Sometimes you're looking after people and their families in the worst of worst times. Um, and sometimes that's hard to not take home with you or not be affected by, like we're human. So um, I do think that's, uh, that is a hard challenge um, of my job. And then the not so nice stuff of mistreatment. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to touch on this, but I will a little bit, I mean, you're dealing with people at their worst a lot of the time. So sometimes anger, frustration uh, gets taken out on you, um, which can also be uh, definitely a big challenge um, to kind of work through. But I do want to just touch at the end of all these challenges. I think I found in my last, the first five years of my career that having the support system, finding good, um, good, practices to make work-life balance um, better and self-care is definitely uh, really huge um, with all with all jobs but I do think it is really important uh, you do as a registered nurse the next um, part here is salary benefits and pensions I kind of just pulled uh, our salary information off our union um, website as a registered nurse in Saskatchewan, you are a part of a union, so they kind of guide um, how much you make. Uh, so you can go to school and be, and before you write your licensing exam, you can work as a grad nurse. So they start at $32 um, an hour. Once you graduate, you start at $37 as a regular floor nurse, that's floor uh, nurse A. Um, and then you kind of just work your way up. It's a scale over the next, I don't know six, seven years, I guess. Um, and then nurse B and C are options, um, such as I've had the opportunity to work as a in-scope manager. So that was nurse B where I um, managed uh, the nursing floor on the acute care side of our facility. Um, so there's other options that put you into higher pay grades. Um, and then nurse practitioners as well, if you go back school for that two years in that master's program um, there's lots of opportunities to increase your salary that way um, there is benefits uh, that go along with our working for the health region um, they have some extended health coverage and dental coverage that includes massage physio um, class coverage all those things um, disability and life insurance and then they also have this employee and family assistance program 
um, that they offer to us um, for yourself and then your family members involved. They have lots of things. Um, if you're going through anything, need counseling, financial um, guidance, all that sort of thing. Um, they have that open free of charge. That's really good service they offer to us. Um, and then as a nurse in Saskatchewan as well, we, we do have a pension plan um, that assistance, it helps to assist in replacing part of your income once you do retire. So I contribute and my employer contributes, um, which kind of results in the end, you'll have a more uh, retirement money at the end of your career um, than if you just were putting money away uh, yourself. Uh, holidays and then kind of I'll uh, touch on kind of our typ typical hours that I work so they do there is holiday hours that we um, get it's kind of based on a percentage of hours we worked so it kind of just averages and then also um, depends how long you've worked for for the health authority as well um, we do have paid sick leave and paid family leave which also is a, a benefit if you have um, the kiddos at home and or you are sick yourself at least you do have some some help that way where you're not missing work and missing your pay so that is also a benefit um so um where i work um in both facilities we have day shift night shift and evening shift so our day shifts start at 7 30 in the morning and we're done around eight o'clock at night so it does make for a long day um but you get your four breaks included in that. Um, and then night shift is from 7.30 at night till about eight in the morning. Um, and then our evening shifts go from 11.30 uh, or 3.30 till about midnight. Um, so there's a variety in those shifts too, which I kind of, it's nice to work an evening shift once in a while and have part of your day at home and then go to work and uh, still get time at home. Talk a little bit about educational requirements. I'm not 100% sure on what all the high school requirements are now, um, but I just kind of included a variety, obviously, talk to your um, uh, guidance counselors about that. But a variety of these courses would be um, English or French, um, math courses. I know I took the foundations and pre calc math as well as calculus. Um, I took all of my sciences that I needed, um, and then the social studies, history, native studies type stuff. Um, and then post-secondary options for training. Um, I'll talk more about in Saskatchewan just because that's what I'm more um, from familiar with. So there's two programs. Um, the first one is uh, University of Saskatchewan. Um, so how that one works is you do your first year of arts and science. Um, with your pre nursing prerequisites and then you apply from there um, for acceptance and then you'll have your three years following to get the four um, the four-year degree and then the other program is the University of Regina and Sask Polytechnic so they offer seats out of Regina and Saskatoon um, and that's a program I took um, that is direct entry out of high school um, as well as you can apply um, after if you've taken university as well. Um, yeah, and then I just kind of made a little point there that obviously you can basically go anywhere to take your nursing thing. There's any big city is going to offer a nursing program. They're, they're in high demand and lots of universities offer that program. So all throughout Canada, all throughout the United States, there would be lots of options to take your schooling as a registered nurse um, and then following um, your degree program you have to write uh, the NCLEX they call it it's the national licensing exam for registered nurses so it is um, um, recognized in other countries as well with the United States being one of them so it makes it easier as Canadian nurses to go over there and work as well um, so once you obtain write your exam, then you just, whichever province you're working in, for me, it was Saskatchewan. Um, I got a license through the Registered Nurses of Saskatchewan, College of Registered Nurses of Saskatchewan, and I continue to practice um, with my license through that. Um, so now I'll start on kind of my journey. How did I get to where I am now? Um, in high school, I was interested in the healthcare 
healthcare field, but didn't really know kind of where I fit into that. I didn't always think I wanted to be a nurse. Um, they had a program offered uh, in our school that we could volunteer at the hospital that I did in high school, just visiting and um, with the patients and um, elderly staff in the long-term care facility. I did really enjoy that. I love talking to people. I love talking to the patients. Um, but I had an interest in pharmacy. So I thought that's kind of where I was headed, more or less. So I went, I started at the U of S, taking my prerequisites for pharmacy. Within six, seven months of that, I kind of missed um, being around people, um, being able to have those conversations with patients, families, um, like I was when I was volunteering back home. Um, and that, so I decided that maybe nursing um, would be better for me than pharmacy. Um, I also felt like just the schooling part, I wasn't enough hands-on stuff for me. Um, so that was another reason why I kind of gravitated towards nursing. I didn't have all my prerequisites for the U of S program. So I ended up applying um, after my first year at university into the SAS Poly and U of R program um, with my high school marks and some of my um, post-secondary classes and got in there. Um, and then through that, they have an option to um, do an accelerated option, finish your degree in three years. So I chose to do that um, just because I had already taken a year at university and I kind of just wanted to get out and start working. So. Um, I took my degree in three years, so I went to school throughout the summers. Um, definitely looking back was hard, but I'm glad I did it. Um, got out sooner and got to start working faster. Um, the U of R program I found was, uh, it was a really good program. It led to lots of hands-on skills, lots of um, opportunities for clinicals and getting out um, working in the hospitals and long-term care facilities um, as well as in the community and I really thought that was beneficial um, and made an impact on me as a new a new nurse um, working in Saskatchewan. Um, once I uh, finished school there was actually if you can believe it a job freeze like a hiring freeze uh, for nurses. There was so many of us that um, it was hard to get a job in uh, like an urban facility. So I um, started in Rosetown because I worked as a care aide, a continuing care aide um, during my schooling process. So I got in um, working in Rosetown from that, um, where I learned a lot as a rural nurse because you are kind of on your own. I mean, you have a couple other nurses with you, but it's definitely different than working in a bigger center. Um, I do love my job in Rosetown. I continue to work there um, to this date. I just, I think it was two years into my career. I just thought I needed more, wanted to explore other options. So yeah, I started working in Saskatoon in the emergency departments there um, and really do ultimately still love that. Um, but that kind of leads into work-life balance. I've had a child since we have a little boy who's two and we live in Rosetown. So Working in Saskatoon um, all the time wasn't, I wasn't able to keep up with it. So um, now I kind of just do it for four or five shifts a month and then work the rest of my shifts um, in Rosetown. So it's, it is, uh, it's a good work balance and it allows me to uh, be home more uh, with my family. Um, does nursing work well with family life and allow you to enjoy life outside of work? I think, I think it does. I do working the 12 hour shifts I'm not home um, all the time um, but I'm instead of working five days a week I work three days a week and I'm home the other four with my son and my the rest of my family so I do I do think it allows me to be at home more than say a nine to five job and um I still am able to get the weekends off that I need off when I have to work weekends if I have something on and can attend, you know, weddings or big events um, that I need. I mean, there is, you do work holidays just because the hospital never closes, but um, you kind of take your turn, you work, work your Christmas or work your Easter and 
then hopefully the next year or two, you kind of get it off. So uh, I do think there is good work-life balance um, that you can create being a registered nurse. And then the last um, little bit there that I'm gonna to touch on is kind of opportunities. I had kind of talked about it a little in the previous slides, but um, the job mar market for nurses right now, um, definitely in high demand. Um, there's lots of options for permanent full-time work, um, which is very enticing. You are guaranteed a job when you graduate and in various care areas. So you're not um, kind of forced to try something or go somewhere that you don't want to work. So there's lots of um, lots of options for you, say in PEDS, um, Emerge, ICU, mental health, um, all those different areas, there's lots of jobs everywhere. So you're not just um, forced to work med surge if you uh, choose not to. Um, what are the chances of advancement in nursing career? I think there's lots of options for advancement, kind of what I talked about previously. Um, you can get your master's, your nurse practitioner, you have the option to do some managing roles um, or even director level roles throughout the health region. Um, so there's lots of opportunities. Um, for advancement, not just um, kind of stuck in one place your whole career. Um, and then what could education lead to? I think this is kind of a big thing um, in terms of if you're considering uh, nursing. I think there's endless opportunities. Um, you're continually meeting new people. Um, every day I meet someone new. Um, your lifelong education, you create and get so much experience. Um, and then also um, you can travel, you can literally go anywhere and nurse. Um, obviously there's different things you have to do to nurse in different um, areas, but travel nursing is also huge right now. So even within Canada, and I think that's an opportunity to go see other parts of the world, other parts of the country um, and still uh, be able to work. So I guess that's kind of it on the stuff that I've had prepared today. So if anyone has any questions or um, anything else, you can feel free. Uh, Kendra, I, I, I've got some questions or comments, but uh, first of all, there are we, we've had seven others join us, seven students join us. Oh, it's gosh. first, you, you win, I think, after <laughs> doing this, you've got the, uh, the most students that joined us live. So hopefully uh, they have some questions because ultimately that's, uh, that's what this is for is to Help, help them make some good career decisions. So uh, I'll, I'll ask a question or so first, and then we'll just see if I'll kind of just stop for a minute and see if Renette or any of the students have any questions, and, but I'll ask some more here. Those 12 hour shifts you talked about, how do you find a 12 hour shift? Is it, is it, does it go by fast or is it slow or what do you find? Yeah, that's a good question. I um, I actually prefer it. I We have an option to work eight hour shifts in Realtown, Um, and I prefer the 12s. I do think they go by fast. Um, by the time I look at my watch, I'm like, holy, it's almost time to go home. And, um, then I get more days at home, which is kind of what yeah, I that's like. The, yeah, that's the trade-off, right? I mean, you, if you work the 12-hour shifts, you don't have to work as many shifts. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, any, any students, you can unmute, uh, and ask a question. Maybe just say where you're from, if you unmute and ask a question. Hi, Kendra. Um, my name is Kennedy and I'm from um, Miller High School in Regina. Um, I was just wondering, um, I know um, that traveling is a is a big thing for me and I want to travel to lots of different places. I was just wondering how um, easy that is as a registered nurse. Like, is it possible to take like two, two weeks off at a time and just wondering how that works? Yeah, for sure. Like if you're looking to take holidays and um, just take time off from work I think it's honestly it's quite easy um there's times that I just schedule like I don't have to take holidays I just schedule where I don't have shifts in a week or lots of full-time schedules allow you to have a week kind of they don't schedule any shifts in a week so um lots of times you just have a week off that's part of your schedule and then you could take holidays to kind of create that two weeks Does that kind of answer your question yes that Yes, that does. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other students? Hey, 
if some of them are just waiting there, I'm just going to ask another one, Kendra. You, you mentioned the accelerated program. Uh, so is that open to anyone or do you have to qualify with a certain marks or something? How do you, how did that work for you? I'm pretty sure you have to apply. I think you have to have a certain average um, to get into that accelerated option. Um, but then once you're accepted, you kind of have the option to either do um, one term, like one semester of where you go through the summer. So you'd be done in three and a half years or um, you have the option to do it in the three years. So then you go through two summers. But yeah, there definitely was like an admission process to that. Yeah. So just so students realize that it's, you, you're going to school full-time year round then in that case, in that, in that scenario. But in, in the training program, you have practicums as well. Not that those are easy, but I mean, there's, some of that is some of that is hospital-based. Yeah, yeah, there's um, kind of, you're taking classes and uh, doing your clinicals from the most part at the same time until year four of, of that program. And then you do a, um, a community placement kind of with a group of people um, in different community settings. And then there, your last semester is uh, practicums where you're um, in the hospital. Okay, any students? Um, hi, this is Renette. I was just gonna maybe fill a little gap here too if students are thinking about questions, but just wondering about COVID. You know, this has been such a, a big thing the last couple of years and especially for healthcare workers. How did you manage that, um, you know, that part? I mean, you were, very, you were a very new nurse when this hit, right? Or three years ago. So how was that for you personally? I am. Um... It's hard looking back because I mean, people ask that question now. It is, it just feels like the last three years have kind of been a whirlwind. Um, I definitely, it's just, it's created a whole new, um, I don't know, nursing is different in terms of kind of, I guess our process related to PPE and ensuring that uh, as nurses we're safe looking after patients um, as well as keeping our patients safe. Um, I do think uh, it definitely was a, an, an adjustment. And then back to that self-care thing, I think um, it, even some of my coworkers have said to me, just finding um, things that you do on your own time that fill your own cup up, I think definitely um, make an impact in like a stressful environment. Well, I have to commend all nurses because, and doctors, anybody that served us the past three years here, this was scary times for a lot of people, for a lot of families. And um, and like you said, that self-care is so important because we don't want you to leave the profession, you know, because of, um, and you know, you hear that often with, with doctors, with nurses and so forth. And so thank you for sticking it out and continuing on in this career. Um, Kendra, you, you kind of have that unique position where you do general duty and you also have the ER job. What's, uh, is it easy to flip back and forth or, or you know, are they quite different? You know, they're not because of the like rural nursing, you kind of do it all, right? I say you're the jack of all trades because you're working on the floor. We have an emergency department as well as um, in the rural facility. So um, it's kind of easy for me to do both. Um, it's nice being in Saskatoon because you have uh, all the different specialties, nurses with lots of experience that have been there a long time, um, respiratory therapy or um, specialists, all them right basically kind of at the bedside. Um, but I also do like the aspect of rural nursing as well. It's kind of kind of has a home for my heart where I started and um, definitely made me become a quick learner. <laughs> Yeah, I could see there's probably, you know, there's there probably more, more variety of responsibilities, I imagine, in, in the general duty of rural nursing. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure I have any more questions. Any students have any more? I'll just, we've got the, oh, there's one coming. Sorry. Go ahead. Lance. I thought somebody had one. Um, just a, 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 another comment here, though, just before we go and end this, uh, Kendra, just uh, once again, thank you so much for doing this and thank you for 
being there as a nurse, uh, like I said, I know my dad, like just for the people I joined in late, my dad is actually in the hospital right now in this hospital, the same hospital where Kendra works. And uh, I see firsthand in the last couple of weeks, the care level that he gets and uh, yeah, makes basically all the things Kendra was talking about. Yeah, I've seen her do that. I've seen her do that. I've seen her do that because Kendra has been on duty uh, some of the nights and some of the days when, when I've been there to see my dad. So uh, again, just like Renette, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. And uh, for all of uh, the students watching, it's a great career. I just personally know a lot of nurses uh, that have had a great career in it. So uh, go for it. I know we need you. There's a shortage, so so it's a, it's a it's a good career. So thanks a lot, Kendra, and uh, we will end it there. <laughs>